So why would God let bad things happen to good people? It's one of those questions that we probably all ask at some point along the way. And for the record, the question is valid, okay? But instead of trying to answer that one today, I'm going to focus on the inverse. Why would God let good things happen to bad people? Now, before we get into it, I, I want to clarify this, and I say bad people in like the eternal spiritual sense, okay? As in, from God's perspective. Like, by these biblical definitions. The first one. Um, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Or maybe the second one. There is not one righteous, no, not even one. Looking at that criteria, it actually turns out that none of us are technically good. And honestly, that's not even how God views us. You see, he sees us either as righteous or not. And by the way, if you didn't grow up going to Sunday school, the definition for righteous is simply just to be made right, as in not wrong from God's viewpoint. So by that definition, without giving uh, our lives over to Jesus and allowing him to cover us with his righteousness, with his goodness, then we're all bad. And I mean that as in like we are all, like all of humanity, we are all bad. And I mean like personally, like we are all bad. So back to our question, why would God let good things happen to bad people? And the answer is grace. Today's whole story devotional reading is from Revelations chapter 8 and 9. So let's look at just an excerpt from chapter 9. This is going to be verses 1 through 6. And chapter 8 and chapter 9 are, are kind of follow along this same vein. But I wanted to read an excerpt and uh, just kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. It says, And a fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth. And he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Then from the smoke came locusts on the earth, and they were given power like the power of scorpions of the earth. They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any green plant or any tree, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. Now listen to this. And in those days, people will seek death and will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. Guys, this is, this is not a Sunday school passage. My kids have never come home with a coloring sheet from Revelations chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. And I know that there are a lot of different interpretations of what this is going to look like, and, you know, maybe it's symbolic or whatever, but here's my interpretation, guys. This is, this is what I know. I know that however this plays out, that this is a revelation that God gave to John showing him what happens to the unrighteous when it comes time for God to judge the world. You see, this is when uh, the window for God's grace comes to an end. It's when the good things stop happening to bad people. It's when John 3.16 stops looking like a Sunday school lesson and starts looking like a lifeline. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and whoever believes in him will not perish, will not experience Revelation chapter 9, but have eternal life. Now, there are two sides of the fence here. God, he has made a way, but you can miss it. So don't miss it. Guys, if you're watching this and you haven't trusted your life to Jesus, don't miss it. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 says, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. Now, if you already are following Jesus and by his grace, you're not worried about Revelation chapter 9, then that means you have a job to do. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means that we've all earned death. We have earned Revelation chapter 9. So if you have found that eternal life, then that is now your responsibility to help guide people away from that death and towards life in Christ. 
Guys, I hope that you find encouragement in the midst of such a dark passage because there is hope and there is life in Christ. We'll see you next time.